hey there folks quick quick video here um, quick video here just redoing oh this thing stinks I'm redoing uh, my original alumolith here uh, for a little mountain bike trip I'm taking with some college friends up at the Kingdom Trails in Vermont ever been to the, the Kingdom Trails up in the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont let me know in the comments I've been a few times over the past 15 years and I love it it's some of the best uh, some of the best rigid mountain biking in all of New England, in my opinion. Which isn't saying much. We often get overlooked out here, you know. The entire bicycle industry is focused on the West Coast or the Rockies, you know what I'm saying? We don't get much. Even Grav, they're all focused on the Midwest. Those East Coasters here, what do we get? We get hiking trails, so we gotta ride our mountain bikes on. So, Kingdom Trails, special place. All right, so we're gonna redo this thing. It needs a lot of work. I'm gonna start by giving it a wash. I'm gonna take my shirt off because you probably like that better. Oh, wow. Okay, here we are again, same shorts as the other day or last video. I'm not doing laundry that much this time of year. Some hot water here. Oh, am I supposed to clip this thing onto my nipple or something? Oh, ouch, okay. Yeah, just rinsing a lot of mold off this thing. A lot of mold and a few years of dirt. The saddle's really getting nasty. I don't know what's on this saddle. A few different microbes just living their lives. Not anymore though. You know, I've only changed, the, I've changed the front brake pads on here once and I have not changed the rear brake pads. We're gonna get a little closer there though. Still plenty of life left in those. I love, you know, uh, rim brake brake pads, they last a long ass time, a lot longer than disc brake pads. So if one of your friends is ever like, man, disc brakes are so much better, be like, I'm saving a lot of money on brake pads here, man. Or whoever's asking you, it could, may not be a man, but. Dang, well, look at those brake pads. There's nothing left there. That's taking it to the limits, okay? That's what we are proponents of here at ronsbikes.com. You know, I usually like to put a, a a bash guard, even though I'm only using two chain rings. I usually like to put a bash guard on the outside, but I took the bash guard off for this bike to put on Amanda Gates's bike. That was a, uh, a customer build. So I'm going naked here. No doubt save a few grams, but I, I generally don't like the step down between the spider and where it connects. So that's another reason why I like to use the bash guard. So we've got a 39, or just a 38, something like that, a 38 or a 39, 20 here. Okay, here's all of our stuff all laid out here. We've got these tires that we're gonna be replacing. You know, they're not all that old, they're just, they're just very moldy. Uh, that's summer here in New England. There we go. This side's even worse. Disgusting. So yeah, we're going to take off these tires and put on, put on some fresh, fresh Red Mars. Rips. Look at that UD new pack. Got your pressure journal back here. Cool, wouldn't you say? We got our crank set here with the new ring on it. We got some tools. This is a Scrimshaw tire lever made by a friend, Lee McCulligan. Um, yeah, we got our tools, grips, got some, some new used salmon cool stop brake pads there on a platter. And we got a bunch of handlebars here. Titanium, carbon, aluminum. Oh boy, what are we gonna choose? Excuse me, have you seen my flat bar mountain bikes anywhere? Over there? Okay. All right, now first things first, we just installed this crank arm back on here with the 3920. First things first, it's nice to have one thing out of the way. 
We've got a lot of work to do here though. All right, next we're gonna get rid of these nasty tires. Man, I should be wearing gloves. All right, let's break the seal. Hopefully there's nothing. Oof, there's odors in there. There's odors in there. Oh, we got to wrestle these tires off. Not too bad. Not too bad. Just gotta loosen the loosen the bead up a little bit first, huh? Ooh, look at that, there's still sealing in there. I don't think we'll be reusing that. Oof. Oh, that wasn't bad at all. Okay. This guy's out. This cush core was put in here like a year and a half ago. This tire. This tire probably still had a few months to go on it. More for the mold. Interesting to note here, folks, I uh, mounted this tire while in Arizona just a few months ago, and there is no sealant left. There's nothing in here. It is bone dry. So this sealant does not last a very long time. It dries up. Who knows if that sealant was still good in that other tire that I just took off, the year and a half old sealant. But, I mean, this is definitely no good. There's nothing in here. It's just latex. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. Don't think I'll be uh, redoing these with, these with the brand X. Yeah, it just kind of turns into. Huh. I don't. Know, I don't know what that's doing. If anything. Got my wheels all cleaned off here now. So the one thing that this sealant did do is really clog up my valves. That's a problem too. So I don't know, either have to change the valves or see if I could poke some of this stuff out of there. All right, so just washed the, uh, washed my wheel off and something that did seal here was uh, my valve core. So I've got stuff jammed all in here. A lot of you tubeless folks know about this when you're going to inflate your tire and you can't get any air in there. I try to I try to try all tubeless sealants that I find and they all I want to say they all work marginally well but no sealant works great in my opinion. Let me know in the comments what you like. We did a, a poll on Ultra Dynamico's uh, um, on Ultra Dynamico's uh, Instagram uh, about a month ago and overwhelmingly people or proponents of orange seal for longevity and ease of use and how well it seals your shit. Okay, let's continue. All right, now that we've got that taken care of, let's, let's mount up this fresh, oh yeah. Ooh, well that's fresh. Mount up this fresh Mars red. Looks like a burgundy, would you say? We uh, were inspired by the Richie Z-Max WCS compound of the early 90s, if you didn't know, or if you couldn't tell. That was always one of my one of my favorite tires growing up. I remember I only had, I had one of them on the front, because that was all that could fit, a 2.35, which looked freaking massive. I think I had a Tioga Psycho Caramel compound on the rear, so I like colored tires. <laughs> gonna look really sweet. Should I put the Kush Core back in? Hello, anyone? We did, we did. We used the Kush Core. Ended up being pretty, pretty simple. Bone, who would have thought? That's it, that's the original plastic. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this new packaging here. We got it now. We got some fresh packaging and it's gonna look so good on the shelves of your favorite local bike shop. You're already looking at it right now. I haven't I haven't stepped back and looked yet, so lucky you, you get to see this thing first. Oh yeah, you must be like you must really be seeing something right now. Just take a look. Whew. 
doctor. Oh, wow. All right, and so the next thing I want to do here is I'm going to switch the handlebars over because I'm doing, you know, my, my, my friends, my college friends are pretty shreddy and we're going to be riding some real technical trails at speed. For that, I am going to switch over to flat bars, which is something I rarely ever ride, but you know, it seems fun. So we're going to try it out just for this weekend at least. Then I'll probably switch back to the uh, my ortho bars, but uh, easy switch because we don't have to rewrap the bars or anything like that. We just got to put the grips on with some hairspray, and I got plenty of that. <laughs> All right, we got our controls removed, and now we're going to... Now we are going to uh, dismember <laughs> this bike. Ortho upright bars, and we're going to try some of these uh, Carver titanium, or what is that, like a 17 degree sweep there with this Neato stem. I know it's oversized 31.8, but would I have liked it to be 25.4, 26.0? Yes, but you know, it's not a perfect world, folks. So what is this gonna look like? What do we think here, folks? Okay, just took that handlebar for a little test spin. It's uh, the cockpit is too short, too short. So I'm gonna switch over to this other handlebar with the longer stem, less, less sweep. All right, so we switched our stem and handlebar around. This stem is a salsa guide stem that I've scratched the logos off of. Not great looking, not a great looking setup here, but if I was, uh, I'm only using it for the weekend though with a bunch of guys that I love them, but they have no taste aesthetically, so. Okay, so yeah, switch those bars out. I don't really like them. That stem is too ugly. The oversized look on here, not liking it. We're gonna try these uh, Sklar bars that Adam Sklar made a few years ago. Bull moose, don't you think? I forgot I had these. Could be perfect. Um, maybe a little bit short, but the look may be right. What is this, the third or fourth decapitation of this bike today? All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, sorry, just landed right on a cricket. All right, got the cables all done. Nothing tightened yet. Just gonna put a little hand sanding in the grips. These are the uh, burgundy or maroon Auri grips that Special Color Blue Lug had made. Pretty spot on there, wouldn't you say? I don't know. Something just, I don't know, I don't know. I'll definitely be switching the bars back to the ortho bars after this weekend, just on aesthetics alone. I'm sitting here, like I always do, staring at my bikes. Typical Friday evening, you know? Saturday, too. I don't know, though. You see what I mean? It's just kind of like, it's kind of stubby looking. It may grow on me. We'll see how it rides.
Hey folks, thanks for watching. I hope it was worth it. I hope you had fun. And hey, you know, we're gonna have bags in like three weeks. So save those pennies. Please like and subscribe, folks.